Hello everyone, this is Caroline and as you can hear, I haven't been very well. I've got a very strange voice at the moment. I'm still not better, but I didn't want to leave you without doing a video. So I thought, well, rather than create something this week, I'll show you my birthday haul and my Temu haul. I was away last week, so there was no video. I didn't want to leave you for another week without a video. So we're going for a haul. So where am I going to start? I'm going to put my Temu haul out of the way. And I'm going to show you my birthday haul first. First thing I got, well, I've had... I'll try to organise this. I'm not very organised in my brain, so please tolerate me. Look how wonky you are. I'll straighten you up as well. So I had some things off Phyllis, and look at this. Now, Phyllis did send me a lot of chocolate, but I would show you that, but we won't mention where the chocolate's gone. I'm sure you can all guess. She bought me these absolutely enormous pile of coffee filters. And I opened them up. I got these, and they're great for printing on using a jelly plate for cutting up there's also ways of doing like a tie-dye effect on them which i'm really looking forward to trying so i've got a gazillion of these i think i would count them but i think it's about a gazillion even there that looks like one if i pull it apart it's two now also to go with that to go with the jelly plate that phyllis sent me oh about two years ago now she gave me some extra stencils so i had these size as you can see i have already used them <laughs> so we still got some paint on these are lovely they actually look prettier with a bit of paint on if ever i'm using modeling paste i got to clean the modeling paste off because otherwise it sets really hard and never comes off but if you're using paint it doesn't hurt to leave it on there and i think it's quite pretty the only thing with these you've got to be so careful because they get knotted up in each other so I've got lots of different patterns there. So that's those size ones. And also, she got me these. And these are called skeleton leaves. I can't find the packet of the big ones at the moment. Sweet Dixie 6x6 stencils. Look at these. If I put them down on there, I know there are lines. So I need better. I'll put it on there. I'll put it on there and you can see better. There's quite a variety here. We've got real geometric type patterns. Quite mandala-ish type patterns. Another geometric one. And then some floral ones. It's a pretty one. I'm still not sure how many are in here. All I know is there's a lot. I mean, I can just keep going and going. Look at that, the heart one. And that one. And that one. And that one. <laughs> and we're only about halfway through. There are so many. In doubt, I think this one is a snowflake, is it? I think it's a snowflake. So I had those as well, so thank you ever so much, Phyllis. It was really kind of you to send me some happy mail for my birthday, and I thoroughly enjoyed using it, as you can tell. Even that one's got some pink on it. I also had some birthday happy mail from Anne and Jason over there in Texas. Now, I've actually met Anne and Jason. Me and my husband went out for a meal with them one day. I think they were in Windsor or Swindon, somewhere like that. We went to see them. They're a really lovely couple, and they've sent me some presents. And they got these off my Amazon wish list. Now, one of the things on my Amazon wish list was one of these scissors. And I know you can see I've already opened it because this isn't the scissors that they sent me. Because the scissors that they sent me is already upstairs being used. And then I use one upstairs and I really wanted one for downstairs because whenever I get started doing my crafting, I think, oh no, my scissors is on the other floor. So I'm forever running up and down the stairs. So now... I've got two of these, they're non-stick and they're brilliant. You can use them to cut pipe cleaners. Well, I can't advise that just in case you ruin your scissors. But I have no trouble with it dull in the edge. I cut loads and loads of paper and then shoop, it flies through fabric. So these are fabulous scissors. I can definitely recommend them to anybody. So thank you, Anna and Jason. <laughs> you sent me my first pair too, so you know how much I love these. They also sent me, well, I'll show you this. Now, there's only one problem with this. It's a craft ink pad, and I've just used up all my lap when I had of this. And the, this has arrived with the lid crack because they don't pack things as well as they could from Amazon anymore. But it's not a problem because I've still got the old container there. So I'm going to remove the broken lid and put the lid on off the other container that's already run out. So thank you. As you can tell, if I've already run out, I use this a lot. It's one of my favourite colours. It's so versatile. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a little drink of water before my voice goes completely. They also got me these metallic acrylic paints. 
look at, uh, yes, I have used some of these as well. I've had such a wonderful time playing with these. So if I take this out, and you can see it in a double layer. And in the bottom layer, we've got, um, well, they don't say the colour, they just say a number. But you can see this, I particularly love this green, this purple. And I like them all. I think if I had to pick a favourite, it would probably be that green. But I don't think there is one in there that I don't like. I love them all. I think they're so bright and cheerful. So they were 12 in those and they are 22 millilitres. And they are great fun. And I have already used them on some jelly printing. Now before I carry on, I'll show you some of the jelly prints I've made. Using the stencils and the metallic paints and the coffee filters. I really am a beginner at doing jelly printing. So these are some of the attempts I've made so far. I've got these. And one of my problems with jelly printing is you're supposed to leave it the layers dry and I've got no patience at all. So I'm terrible for rushing things and then it doesn't quite work the way it should. So I've got that one. It's rather a similarity here. Now, I'm not quite sure whether I'll just carry on making them this side, but it seems a waste of the things on the outside. So I'm thinking of doing more along. Now, this isn't brilliant. I was using this to clean off my stencils, but it's actually covering the whole of the page. So I'm thinking what I might do is cover a whole one of these with a plain colour and then clean off onto the top of it. And then I'll have complete sheets of decorated coffee filters. So that's the sort of thing I've been up to. Pop those over there. Oh, and I did have, let me show you these. I love these. These are like a plastered walls. They're not supposed to be bright. They're supposed to be, if you imagine going into a very old house in Italy and you'd see the walls a museum or a mansion looking like that. That's what I think that looks like with layers of paint and stucco and Paris, plaster of Paris all coming off. So that's what I really love making with those. Right, where was I? I've done these, haven't I? I know I'm going to be a little bit brain dead today. <laughs> I can't think straight, so sorry about that. There's my little letter from Anna Jason from Amazon. I got this crafter's companion edge crimper for distressing card and paper edges. Now, I'd never heard about one of these until I saw one advertised on Amazon. And I thought, that has got to be good. So, should we try it out live on air? So, that's not much, whoops, live. I have recorded this at the moment, which is 10 o'clock UK time. I would assume I'm probably tucked up in bed because <laughs> I'm, I'm not feeling 100% up to staying up late. I've got a piece of paper here. just torn this off. So, I haven't read the instructions. Let's have a look. Um, it doesn't say. So, I'm going to imagine... You stick it in there and you... Oh, yes, look at that. You can do it as much or as little as you like. This is a rather flimsy paper, so it's doing it really easily. I would imagine if you've got a difficult paper to do, it would, or a thicker paper, it would take a bit longer. Let's try this cardboard. Oh, I'm enjoying this now. Does it rough up the cardboard as well? It's a very thick cardboard. I think it's got to struggle on this. Are there any different size gaps? No, I can't see any. It's doing a bit of a job, but that's just too thick. It's only just fitting in there. But, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about this? Let's try to do it on this. Sorry about this. I'm mean, really awkward talking with a strange voice. That really does look good, doesn't it? Let's see what I can do on this side. It's all facing up this side. Oh, yes, I like that. It's really useful. I will be putting a dangly bit or something onto that because I'm terrible for losing big things like my scissors. That won't have a hope unless I fix it to something much bigger. <laughs> so thank you, Anna Jason. And they also got me this book. I love this. Art of Visualist History by Robert Cumming. And it goes right the way back to ancient Egypt and all the way through. I've got to be careful because YouTube doesn't like me showing any nudie pictures. And there are lots of nudie pictures in the older section. So I'm going to skip through those. Whoops, we nearly had one then. And we'll go forward to well, 1900s and 1970. I'm going to trust them to be just putting in abstract art that isn't identifiable. But there's so much information on every author. And oh, look, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Oh, there we go. We've got a chicken with one leg, or are they running? I'm not quite sure. They're green with blue legs, as you do. But I love finding out what the thought process is behind the people who make this. Oh, we'll see this year. That 
which was Marcel Duchamp had this as a found object piece of art. And I saw that in the Tate Modern in London when I was on holidays last week. One of the um, museums I wanted to go visit was the Tate Modern while we were there. And I saw that in person. Well, in urinal. <laughs> So that was fun. Oh, it was great going to the museums up in London. I saw the sunflowers. So that was really interesting. Smaller than I imagined, though. I imagined that was going to be four times the size it was. And I have heard it's the same with the Mona Lisa. Apparently, she's a lot smaller than you would expect her to be. But it's just because I think we see them on TV and in books and we've got no perspective. But it was really interesting to see. I saw so many different things. I can't remember them all now. Phil, my husband, he was particularly excited by the Turners. He liked those. The And uh, who else was it? He liked some of Monet's paintings. I love the sunflowers. Not the sunflowers, the water lilies. I was surprised with the water lilies, how and water lily like some of them were though i stepped right back i squinted my eyes and i still couldn't really see that the one that was there was the biggest one was water lilies beautiful just the brush strokes and seeing all the colors but maybe it was me maybe i'm just being fussy <laughs> maybe i was too particular i knew it wasn't going to be easy to see because apparently he painted those when his eyes were starting to fail and so that's why they were so big and that's why everything was so blotched he was painting what he could see easily but fantastic to actually see things like that in reality and to get all the inspiration of the colours and the shapes. It's just lovely. I thoroughly enjoyed my trips to the museums. Right, now, when I had my birthday, I also had a bit of birthday money, so I decided to splash out on some table purchases. Do you all want to see my table purchases? Good. <laughs> Let's pop this down over there. I'll bring them on. Now, some of you remember probably my pokey thingy. Now, my pokey thingy, can you see the end of it? Um, I don't know if it, how clear that is to see. Hold it right up there. It's not quite a straight pokey thingy anymore. It's had a hard life. I think it was originally designed for working stitches on a knitting machine, so it's got not a lot of oomph in it. It's a little bit fragile, as you can see, because it bends so much. So I decided it's about time I needed to consider getting a new pokey thingy. And... They do these offers every now and then with Tamo, And this came up for, oh, I think it was £1.42. So I thought, seeing as that's so cheap and I am ordering a few things anyway, I'm going to go for it. So look at this. It's a dead posh porky thingy. Now, I don't keep these little ends on because I find I'm more likely to stab myself if I put an end on a sharp thing than if I don't. But I always store it face down in my pot. Let's see if I can get it. I've got wires everywhere here today. This is my pot of bits and pieces. Move those out of the way. And so I always store my pokey thingies downwards like that. Same with my craft knife. I can't find the top anyway on that. But by the time, if I'm rushing, I put it on. Sometimes I slip. So I'd rather just store them all unprotected but straight down. So I now have a brand new shiny pokey thingy. Let's see how long it takes before this pokey thingy is bent. <laughs> Because I do give my porky thingies a hard time. Right, where was I now? I keep forgetting. Aha, I put those out the way. And on my table hole. So I got this. Now, I want to make some journals using some fancy papers. I always just use plain papers and decorate them. And I thought, well, since I've got some birthday money, let's spoil myself. So I did. And if I can get in, this is mulberry paper. They had two grades of this. So it's a bit first it's a bit crinkly and I've not got the loudest voice in the world. They had a Mulberry second grade, I think they called it, and that had holes in it. Or oh, this was the top grade and this doesn't have holes in. So if I open it out, oh, this feels unbelievable. If you've never handled this sort of paper, oh, I never have. And that is lovely. You smell it. It smells of... I'm not, it's almost a painty smell, almost a green smell, almost a tree sap smell. It's a really strange smell. Not dislikable, I think it's quite pleasant, but not a smell I've smelled before. Now, this has still got, if you look carefully there, there are, there's a little tiny hole there, but nothing like the seconds. They had quite big holes, which I think it would also look nice if you're making something like an age journal, something like that. Then that's good. And the age, I love the edges on this. Look at that. You can see the fibres. 
So I got those and I thought as well as using them to make a journal, I think they're going to be great fun for doing a little bit of printing on. I don't know how well they'll hold up to being used on a jelly plate, whether it'll be too much of a pull and it could break them. I don't know. Let's have a look how tough this is. Pull it, oh, pull it really, really hard. And there. Oh, it's quite tough. So if I get a piece of normal paper, we use this from Amazon. Let's pull really hard and see, give it a pull test. Look, no, that's not breaking. So it is more delicate than the paper you get from Amazon. <laughs> so there you go. It's a bit definitive, isn't it? Doesn't really help, but but I am surprised how tough that is, and I can't wait. Oh, this in a book. Can you imagine? Let's open them out because they stick in together a little bit. And then, have you ever used mulberry paper? If you have, let me know in the comments what do you use it for and what do you think of it. Were you pleased with it or were you a bit disappointed? I'd love to know what you th your thoughts are because my thoughts are not necessarily going to be your thoughts. At the moment, I love this. If I open all that out so they're not sticking together, look at that. If you put that in a book, so you had, so you had double that, and he was in a journal like that with that on the edge. That really does look old and ooh, really tactile. You just want to touch it. It's lovely. So I'm looking forward to using that. I still haven't come up with a final decision what I'm going to do. I know roughly I'm going to be using it in a journal, but I don't know what style journal. Excuse me, I have to have a drink again. Sorry for the gulping. So I'm not sure what I'm going to use that for yet, but it's definitely lined up. I'm going to be making more journals this year, so that is going to be very useful. I also got so I put my right bag with the right paper. I got this. Now this is another type of paper. And I don't know if you've got any guesses what this is. They're lovely big sheets. Let's see if I can just take one out because it's really difficult to get things back in the bag. And this is that one or two sheets. There's two sheets. I thought it was rather thick. This is rice paper. Now this I think is going to look lovely for using for jelly plate printing, but also for doing stamping on or mark making. And I think if I use a glue to glue this to something, we're gonna get a little bit of transparency coming through it as well. So I think I quite like the idea of doing some Chinese characters, Japanese characters, characters as, I'm, as in letters, not as in people, and seeing how that goes. But I, I think that is going to be great fun to use. I think I can use some for putting as pages in journals. I can use some of this. It feels, let's do a little tear test on the corner. Let's see how strong it is. Not, not as strong as the mulberry paper. That broke really quickly. I was just wondering if I could sew it and it would still hold together. Here I got some pins. Let's have a look. I'm going to put a pin in. <laughs> I know. And then try pulling. Oh, that's not really going to hold any sewing, is it? Much too fragile. But that doesn't matter because I've got plenty of other ideas for it. So that is my rice paper. I've also got some of this. Now, this isn't paper. I bet you all thought it was paper when you saw it. Let's open it up. It is. See if you've got the, this 39 inches by 78 inches interfacing. And I want to use this to do some sewing on. Oh, there's loads and loads of this. I won't keep unfolding it. It's just going to take over the room. There just seems to be tons and tons of it. Look at it. So I got that. And this was really expensive. I was looking on Amazon, looking in dressmaking shops. And I thought, oh, plus I'll buy half a metre. And then I saw the price on this for, what was it again? 39 inches by 78 inches. So that's oh, about one by one and a half metres, more than that. And oh, thinking now, I think it was about £2.20, something like that. It was a really good price. So I quite like this. And I've also been thinking about doing some patchwork as well. And I usually use it, do either sewing bits together. I like scrappy quilting using a sewing machine. Or I also like English paper piecing quilts. But this I'm going to try. I can't remember the name of it. It begins with K and it's a Japanese style of making quilts. Um, com I don't think it's kombushi, kombuti, kambuzi, <laughs> something like that. Probably none of those. But it's that sort of thing, uh, as well as all the other ideas I got for this. 
And I'm pretty sure I did order fusible, and I think this is fusible. So if you got, uh, say you've cut out a shape, you could iron it onto this and cut it out. And it's a bit thicker if you're going to applique with it. I've been shopping in the thick snow. I'm back. And I got this. It's a box of flowers. Pull them out. Beautiful roses. Lovely antique colours. They're supposed to be fixed into the bottom there. And I got these for a pound. So I've got myself a lovely box. Oh, don't, I think they glued the, <laughs> the bottom or the lid onto the bottom of the box. So I'll have to sort that out. And also I've got these, oops, sorry, gorgeous flowers. Look at this. They picked just the right combination of colours. So I'm really looking forward to making some shabby chic items with this. And if you like... We're looking at craft videos as well as haul videos and also don't forget to subscribe before you go because I'm going to be using all these lovely goodies in my craft channel. Right, I got these. Now, I'm not sure what to do with these. I got these, as you can tell, a pound each. These were in the Salvation Army. And I love them. Look, you've got this person here working at, I think that's a lathe or something, or a sanding belt. And there's a sewing machine. And I'm not quite sure what all this, some of these bits are. There's a person doing something with a box. <laughs> that that looks like a lathe, doesn't it, there? And we've got this little wooden desk here. And we've got this person. I take it he's the, um, what do you call him? Not a metalsmith, is it? I can't think. <laughs> My brain isn't working today. But he's, you know, you know what I mean. He's one of those. And so there we got all the bits and pieces and some extra hammers for him. And for a pound, I thought, well, I love that if I don't do anything else with it. I did originally think maybe I could take all the little characters out. But the more I look at it, this is a vintage item. It's not new, I don't think. I think that it would be a shame to take that apart. It's got so much dust in it. Somebody's had that on the wall for a long time. And then this one, we've got like the baby's cot, is it? And, oh, I'm showing you them. You can't see the doll's house here and books on the shelf. And what's that? I'm not quite sure what that is. And we've got a little bookcase there. And the table, grandfather clock and a chair. And we've got a person. Uh, we've got a little bed. And I'm not quite sure what they are in there. And then this lady here. So I don't know what she's doing either. And so I got those, and I got this. Where's the price gone off this? It was 20p, but there's no price on it. It says, working, needs one battery. <laughs> it needs more than one battery. It needs some straightening out. Look at the shape of these hands. They're never going to turn. But I can try straightening them up, and if they don't work, I can always replace them with another type of hand. I think they might straighten up. Spend a bit of time, I'll take them off, get them on a flat surface. And then I did fancy the idea of making a huge grandfather clock with this, but I think maybe I'm overstretching myself. What do you think? Do you think I can make a huge grandfather clock out of cardboard boxes and this shop, this clock front? Hmm, I'll think about it. <laughs> See how enthusiastic I'm feeling in a couple of weeks' time. And also, I got some books. I'll show you the books I got. The children's box at the moment. Let me check. The, no, these ones are from the shop, and they were three for a pound. So I got the Hutchinson's Treasury of Children's Poetry. And I love, you can see it was a library book at some point. And I love the images in this. Lots of fun poems in here. And you've got all these wonderful things. So I think this is going to be great fun to use either in journals or what I can do is actually turn the book into a journal. And then cover over the pages I don't like, or the pages that are a bit boring. And then, like, if you have a page like this, you can journal on top of this. You've already got the background done. Or on this. So I'm not sure what to do with that. It's rather a big one. It's rather thick. But that would be more fun. So I haven't decided on that one yet. I haven't decided on a lot at the moment. And then, in search of Great Britain and Northern Europe. So I got this to see if there were any good images. And, oh, look, you've got a lady in a Welsh hat there. And some leaks. And oh, I've been up there. Uh, if that is the one in Aberystwyth, yes, that's the place in Aberystwyth. I've been up there. Oh, I've just been to London, so we got our beef eater with our soldier there. I can't remember what they're all called. 
And what have we got here? We've got somebody shouting under an umbrella and somebody riding an old bike. Amazing pictures. <laughs> I can't think what I will be using them for offhand, but you never know. There are a nice lot of faces in here, a nice lot of buildings, some racing greyhounds. So that's for 30p. There's an awful lot of paper and pictures in there. And this one is in search of North America. And I like this idea to get in this book because I haven't seen America. I've never been there. I've seen it on TV, but it's not the same, is it? So we've got lots and lots of pictures here. I take it as Disneyland. Uh, we got the Promised Land, wherever that is. And some cowboys. And, oh, look. Is that an Angora goat? He's very nice. Um, no, it doesn't say what one it is. It just says they're shepherds. But look at the amount of fur they got off that goat. Ooh, tractor fest things. Some baseball players. Lots of exciting pictures in there. Look at this, the older redwoods. So I'm going to, before I do anything with this book, I'll be reading it because I think it's going to be so interesting. And for 30 odd P, you can't go wrong. And I'm just going to disappear for one more second while I get out. They had an offer on in the shop, all children's books for 10 P. Well, a Tempe, I couldn't resist. So I got this one, which is David Williams, and it's The World's Worst Parents. And then I'm not sure whether there's anything particularly um, picture-worthy I would use in here. So I'm not sure what to do with this, but a Tempe, it did look attractive on the outside anyway, and a quick flick on the inside. I didn't realise just how little journaling-type paper is in there, so I'll pop that there. And I got this cardboard book, Where Are You, Little Red Dragon? Which is very fitting for somebody who lives in Wales. So they're looking for the little red dragon. Oh, look, it's got lots of pop-outs. He's waiting to hatch from the colourful shell. Oh, what's happening here? He's saying hello, the sweet little croak. He's got a voice like mine. That's nice. And if I decided, I might think my grandson's going to love this. So I may take that up for my grandson. I think he will really enjoy that. And then I got the snowman. I know it's got some really nice... Well, look at that. Just if you're looking for backing papers. That's a lovely backing paper. This, I'm going to check out if I can find somebody who'd like this first because it's a lovely book. I love the little pictures in here. But if not, I can use... Look at all these pictures. They're going to be great for a Christmas journal. I could even use this as the journal. And then build around it. That would be fun. And I could even, oh, now I'm thinking, I can make it a black, white and grey journal with really small red highlights. That would be fun. Mm, I'll think about that one. Oh, sorry about the change of plan. Sorry it wasn't quite a crafting video. I uh, decided I was going to get something out. And I did. I definitely succeeded. I got a video out. <laughs> so this is it. And before you leave, if you did enjoy this video, then please think about giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. That would be great fun. And next week, hopefully, I shall be back to normal and we'll go back to having some craft and see what we can come up with. Hmm, what should we do next week? You'll find out. So, at the end of this video, I'll put some links to other videos. So if you really want to watch me doing some crafting, I'll put some links so you can just click on another one of my videos and see me making something. And I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget, happy crafting and have fun. Bye.